Yeah, man. Just getting ready to start a dinner rush. But I figured before I do, I'd lay down a track or two, you know? Come out here by the water and get inspired. I was hanging with the kettle boys yesterday. We had a good time. We got some time to play. We slipped away from every daily day routine. Had a good time, if you know what I mean. We had the 12 gauge raised up to the sky. Shooting the ducks and watching them die. Having a good time blasting them out of the sky. What we gonna do? Ho ho ho, that's right. We gonna keep on rocking, never, never stopping. Until the break of dawn, we got it going on with the kettle bottom boys. We'll make some noise, boom, boom to the sky, that's right. With the kettle bottom boys, we're making some noise. Making ducks fly right out of the sky. Killing the geese too, that's what we do. Recognize, that's how we roll. Right. What we got here is a couple different things. I've got some awesome blue line tile, which is caught right off of the Virginia coast here. Tile fish, it's real nice in the grouper family. Very, very tasty, flaky white meat. And I've also got, it's a little under the radar. I killed it myself, so I can't serve it to the public, but you guys can tear it, tear it up. Uh, this is some nice Canada goose right here. I've had it marinated for about 36 hours. A nice blend of sesame oil, some raspberry, a little balsamic vinegar. Uh, we're gonna let that all chill out, throw it on the grill, slice it up with a little cranberry and walnut reduction, and the towel fish we're gonna do with a lemon caper for blanc. Check it out. See that goose, got it going on, nice marinade. I like to cook it medium rare, just like a steak. But uh, we'll pop this big old fat breast here, right on a hot grill, get that thing going. I do it about five to six minutes on each side to keep it nice and rare, medium rare on the inside. And then we'll get working on that uh, reduction. Uh, for the tile fish, a little olive oil. I got a smoking hot pan, like I said. I want to get it real, real nice and hot. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of butter. Season up that fish on the skin side so we can get a nice crispy crust on that skin. We're gonna pop it right in skin side down in a hot pan. Get it going there. Season that again with a little kosher salt. A little fresh cracked pepper. Get that rock and roll. It's important to get a nice crispy sear on that outside of that skin. It's gonna make it have a real good texture. You get the nice creaminess of the meat, but then you get a crispy crunch on the outside. What I'll do is finish this off in a 500 degree oven. But uh, right now we're just gonna get that outside seared off, locking all those juices and make it ready to rock. One thing you wanna be careful is not try to pull the fish off the pan too soon. You wanna let the natural uh, oils release and let it let itself go from the pan, otherwise the skin will all stick to the pan. We'll let that sit there for a second. It'll start to get around, we'll move it over, flip it over, pop it right in the oven. We'll check on our goose. We've had that goose going for a minute or two now. It's got some nice marks. We're gonna crisscross it. Put those nice fancy crisscross marks on there. Then we get to where we wanna be. We might let it rest for a little bit and then we'll go ahead and slice it up real thin get that uh, chutney going. Sometimes it'll be a little stubborn, you give it a little help. Now you can see we got a nice crispy crust on that skin. I'm gonna do, let that get seared on that side. We're gonna deglaze it with just a little bit of white wine, pop her in the oven, finish her off in the oven, get it where she needs to be. Meanwhile, we're getting our pan hot for our chutney, which is gonna be, like I said, dry cranberries, walnuts, a little bit of white wine, a little honey. Let that reduce down, it's gonna go great over top of that goose breast. Got some nice, let me do that again. Got some nice crisscross marks on our goose there. Pop it over, get a little color on the other side, and we'll let that go in the oven for a few minutes as well. If you glaze the bottom of that pan, you get all those nice bits of food that are stuck on there all. Everybody's happy, we're gonna put that in a hot 500 degree oven. And magically, it'll be done in about five or 10 minutes. Going to, uh, pop that goose breast, now we got our nice grill marks on there. It's cooked real rare right now. We're gonna go ahead and pop it in a hot oven, finish it off. Our tile fish is looking good. Pull that guy out, you can see it's nice and flaky, and moist. What we're gonna do with him, I'll get ready to do our chutney. Um, if you can hand me a square plate, Please, or whatever. Come on, Ethan, get to work, man. Yeah, what do you, what do you been up for? Small spin. <laughs> so I have some creamy polenta we made here, which is basically a cornmeal based, uh, like a grits almost, basically. We're gonna put a little bit of that on there. We're gonna take a tile fish, and just gently set that off to the side. I've got a little lemon caper for Blanc here, which is just a lemon caper cream sauce. And we'll just drizzle that right around there like that. Nice and simple. 
been able to throw a couple of these snow pea sprouts on top just for a little garnish there. And once again, very simple, elegant. You can taste the fish, but that lemon and the caper will kind of accent the nice mild flavors of the fish and the polenta is real creamy. Very nice combo. I highly recommend that to anybody here. For this chutney, we're gonna use a real hot pan once again. A little bit of olive oil. Start off with a little bit of butter. A little bit of garlic. Get that going. Hit it with our dried cranberries. A little bit of toasted walnuts. Get all that rock and roll in there. Just gonna start to open these cranberries up a little bit. And hit them with a little kosher salt. Then we're gonna deglaze with some Cointreau, which is orange flavored liquor. It smells good, but I'm working. I'll wait till after work, all right? So the fire department don't come. Just gonna reduce that down a little bit. Let those cranberries open up. I'm gonna hit it with just a little scotch of white wine. Turn that down on low. Let that simmer while we pull our goose breast out. Now I'm from the old school, I like the old touch method. You kind of tell by touching how it goes. A good way to do that is to look at your hands. On your hand up here is rare. As you get further down your hand, that's well done. So where it feels real firm, that's what a well done steak or goose breast feels like. As you get up to this fattier part, that's gonna be the rare side. We're looking about right there, because that's how we do it. Cool. Let that rest for about three or four minutes while we finish up our chutney. You can see those cranberries are starting to open up. The natural sugars are going to come out. We're kind of thickening up that sauce if we reduce down a little bit. Put that off to the side. And we'll grab a plate and get ready to slice our goose up. So with our goose breast, we want to make sure we cut across the grain. So it's a nice tender, even cut. We don't want to cut with the grain. That's going to make for a chewy, grainy uh, piece of meat. So we'll start from the high side here. Cut it on a little bit of a bias right across the grain. As you can see, that's a nice, rare. It's going to be delicious. Some people like it a little more than that me. I'm gonna do it just like that. So we're gonna take a little bit of mashed potatoes. We'll take a couple slices of that nice rare goose breast. And we'll hit it with our cranberry chutney. And the nice sweetness of the cranberry and the crunches of the water. Some people like to cook a little more, but when you try it like that, you'll never go back. Hey, I'm here right now with Abel and Will. We snuck away from camp, and we came down to see the multi-talented Johnny Moe at Mallard's in Onancock, Virginia. We got some fresh goose breast, some fresh tile fish he just cooked up fresh in the kitchen, and we're gonna dig in. We had a great hunt this morning. We're looking forward to a great hunt tomorrow. Hey guys, cheers, it's been a great time. Yeah. Eastern Shore of Virginia. Doesn't get any better than this. Damn straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you're catching some dub. Make sure you catch a couple of goose. And make sure you learn everything you need to do when you're watching Kettle Bottom Outdoor Pursuits. Yes. They got the styles and the tricks of the trade. They're going to show you how to do it each day. Make sure you don't miss it when you see them tonight on the TV. Hope you get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's delicious. A goose. That's that towel fix. Oh, awesome, man. Is it cooked like, all the way through? Yeah. Yeah, that's good.